15 miles above the Earth, where the sky fades from blue into black, there are no second chances, no checklists, no practice runs, just raw skill, perfect judgment, and nerves of steel. In 1965, an Air Force captain climbed into the cockpit of the most advanced aircraft ever built by human hands, the State Route 71 Blackbird, and prepared to do something that would make even today's test pilots break into a cold sweat. His name was Captain Pete Collins, and before that day was over, he would prove just how close the Blackbird could come to the edge of space. At Lockheed's legendary skunk works, one man stood behind this mission Clarence Kelly Johnson. The aerospace genius who had already changed aviation forever looked Collins straight in the eye and gave him a simple instruction. Take her beyond 90,000 feet. There was just one problem. The simulator didn't exist yet. What happened next would become one of the most daring and least known test flights in American aviation history. To understand why this mission mattered, you have to understand the world of 1965. America was locked in a Cold War with the Soviet Union, and the illusion of airspace immunity had already been shattered. In 1960, a U-2 spy plane piloted by Gary Powers was shot down over Soviet territory. The message was unmistakable. High altitude alone was no longer enough. The United States needed something faster, something higher, something untouchable. Kelly Johnson's answer was radical. A jet designed to cruise at over Mach 3, higher than any operational aircraft before it. The State Route 71 Blackbird wasn't an evolution of existing designs. It was a complete break from everything aviation knew. Titanium skin, hybrid turbo ramjet engines, fuel that doubled as coolant, a structure that expanded several inches in flight due to heat. This aircraft didn't just bend the rules, it rewrote them. Officially, the State Route 71 was rated to operate around 80,000 feet. But Johnson wanted to know the truth. He wanted to know how far the Blackbird could really go. That's where Pete Collins came in. Among the small, elite group of pilots selected for the State Route 71 program, Collins stood out. Other pilots called him a natural, a flyer with instinctive control and ice-cold composure. He had the rare ability to feel what an aircraft was doing before the instruments confirmed it. That's exactly the kind of pilot you need when flying into territory no one has ever mapped. And this mission had no safety net. There were no simulators to rehearse emergencies. No established procedures for extreme altitude handling. Every decision Collins made would be written into history in real time. On the morning of the flight, Collins climbed into a pressure suit that was closer to a spacesuit than anything worn by conventional pilots. At altitudes above 90,000 feet, unprotected humans cannot survive. The air is so thin that bodily fluids would begin to boil. This was the realm where aviation starts to merge with spaceflight. Walking toward the Blackbird, Collins faced a machine unlike anything else on Earth. The SR-71's matte black titanium skin was built to withstand temperatures exceeding 500 degrees Fahrenheit. At full speed, aerodynamic heating caused the airframe to expand so much that the aircraft leaked fuel on the ground, only sealing once airborne and hot. Inside the cockpit, Collins was joined by his reconnaissance systems officer, Conrad Connie Seagroves. In the state Route 71, pilot and RSO functioned as a single organism. Collins flew the aircraft. Seagroves managed navigation, sensors, and systems that were decades ahead of their time. The J-58 engines roared to life. Each engine produced over 32,000 pounds of thrust with afterburners engaged. These weren't ordinary jet engines. At speed, they transitioned into a ramjet-like mode, allowing the Blackbird to operate where conventional aircraft would tear themselves apart. Takeoff was only the beginning. Climbing in State Route 71 wasn't about pulling back on the stick. At extreme altitude, the aircraft's flight envelope narrowed to just a few knots. Fly too slow and the wings would stall. Fly too fast and structural failure became a real possibility. This margin became razor thin above 80,000 feet. Collins climbed through 70 then 80 Now he was in uncharted airspace. At 90,000 feet, over 99% of Earth's atmosphere is below you. The sky darkens. The horizon curves. 
The atmosphere appears as a thin blue line separating Earth from the void above. But Collins wasn't there to admire the view. Every vibration mattered. Every instrument reading mattered. Every input had to be perfect. The Blackbird responded flawlessly. Kelly Johnson's design was proving itself in the most unforgiving environment imaginable. Collins pushed higher, how much higher remains classified, but those close to the program later said he proved the state Route 71 could brush the edge of space itself. Then came the real test. During descent, one of the engines suffered a catastrophic failure. Turbine blades shattered and blasted out the rear of the engine like shrapnel. At Mach 3, even small debris could be fatal. For a few heart-stopping moments, Collins and Seagroves didn't know if the aircraft had been fatally damaged. They were 15 miles up, moving three times the speed of sound, with half their thrust gone. Most pilots would never face a situation like this. Collins did what test pilots do best. He analyzed, adapted, and executed. Managing the remaining engine, adjusting speed, and planning a controlled descent, he brought the Blackbird back safely. That single moment taught engineers something priceless. The State Route 71 could survive catastrophic engine failure. Kelly Johnson personally presented Collins with a model of the Blackbird after that flight, a rare gesture that spoke volumes. It was a symbol of trust earned, not given. The State Route 71 program succeeded not just because of revolutionary engineering, but because of men willing to fly beyond the known limits of physics and human endurance. Pete Collins never chased fame. His achievements remained largely classified for decades. But his legacy lives on in every hypersonic vehicle, every stealth platform, and every spacecraft that followed. The next time you see in State Route 71 in a museum, remember this. That aircraft didn't just fly fast and high. It was proven by men who climbed beyond 90,000 feet with no simulator, no handbook, and no margin for error. That is what real aviation pioneers look like. And this is what the State Route 71 story is really about. Not just speed records or altitude numbers, but trust. Trust between engineers and pilots, between theory and reality, and between a nation and the people willing to push beyond known limits. When Captain Pete Collins took the Blackbird beyond 90,000 feet with no simulator and no safety net, he wasn't chasing glory. He was answering a challenge that only a handful of humans on Earth could understand. At that altitude, where the sky turns black and the margin between control and catastrophe is measured in seconds, skill becomes instinct and instinct becomes survival. That single flight proved the state Route 71 wasn't just fast. It was resilient. It proved American engineering could operate at the edge of space and still come home. Even decades after retirement, no aircraft has truly replaced the Blackbird. Its legacy lives on in modern stealth platforms, hypersonic systems, and future space plane concepts. So when you see in State Route 71 in a museum, remember this, it wasn't built to be admired. It was built to be flown into the unknown by men who accepted risk as the price of progress. If you respect the pilots and engineers who shaped modern air power, subscribe to RS Military. We break down the real stories behind the world's most advanced military technology. Stay informed. Stay ahead.